On the northwest corner of Dundas Street West and Brock Avenue, there was a once popular destination called the Appy Forum. There was not just one, but three taverns at this spot, Collard's Hotel, Joseph Church's Brown Bear Tavern, and the Queen Street Hotel. Well, the Appy Forum was a nickname given to a, a trio of taverns located on a, again, by a toll gate on the Dundas Road, which was an early pioneer road which led from York to Dundas, obviously. Uh, there were three of them and, uh, again, the social center of the community. And uh, they often had horse races at these places as well. So again, it was kind of a rural social center uh, for the folks living along Dundas Road. The Peacock Hotel, built in 1830, was located on Dundas at today's Old Weston Road. When the town of West Toronto Junction developed in this vicinity, the Peacock was rebuilt as a larger brick structure in 1890. Further west is the old Lambton House Hotel. Located just steps from the Humber River, it operated from 1848 until 1989, when it held the longest liquor license in Ontario. Today, it's one of a handful of landmarks that remain from the once thriving village of Lambton Mills. Like other hotels at the time, Lambton House served as a station on Dundas, then a stagecoach route. Today, this elegant old structure is a center for community and historical events. As Dundas entered Etobicoke, travelers came across Montgomery's Inn near today's Islington. It was built in the early 1830s for Irish-born speculator and captain in the York militia, Thomas Montgomery. Built of limestone, the inn is recognized as one of Ontario's finest surviving examples of loyalist Georgian architecture. Today, the inn is a museum set in the late 1840s and 50s during the height of the tavern's popularity. King Street had places like the Lovejoy House near King and Bay and the British Coffee House at York, designed by John George Howard, owner of High Park. the corner of King and Bathurst is the ever popular Wheat Sheaf Tavern. Well it's 161 years old. It's the longest continuously running bar. It has always been a bar. It's never it's never really changed at all. And that's I think of the most historical significance. Toronto was a different city when the Wheat Sheaf first opened. It was built by Bernard Short, a baker who worked at nearby Fort York. In the 1840s, he established himself at King and Bathurst, and the Wheat Sheaf opened shortly after. It opened in 1849, and it probably would have been about half the size it is now, and a two-story. Now, what would have, uh, would have put it apart from all the other structures around here would have been that it was made of brick, and the others were made of wood. So with the you know, problems of wood structures, they burned down, fell down, were eaten, you know. And so this is why this one was in such good condition when it was built and is, is now is still. Expanded and embellished over time, the Wheat Sheaf is said to have been frequented by soldiers of Fort York. As Toronto moved into the 20th century, the Wheat Sheaf changed with the times. The room in the front would have been, in its day, ladies and escorts. Ladies weren't allowed to drink in, in the, the actual draft room with the man, nor could they come into a, into a, a bar unescorted. So that's why they called it ladies and escorts. And by the same notion, a man couldn't walk from the draft room into ladies and escorts without escorting a lady. And that was became very unpopular in the 60s. We clung to that one for till the late 60s before that that went the way of history. Further west is the Palace Arms at the corner of King and Strawn. It was built in 1890 for a widow, Mary Ann White. I guess an interesting uh, point is that uh, women were often better tavern keepers than men were and usually widows of the 
tavern keepers because they had the expertise in the kitchen, they had the expertise of running the place. The Palace Hotel was designed by prominent architect F.H. Herbert in an eclectic style characteristic of his work. For many years, the hotel was surrounded by industry of all kinds, catering to local workers. By the 1950s, it was bought by new owners, later becoming the Palace Tavern. We took it over as an operating hotel, and uh, it was considered one of the best one-hour busy hotels in the city because Massey Harris, it used to be, and then Massey Ferguson, uh, on their shifts, we'd get very, very busy, and it was a, a busy spot. Uh, in those days, they had a men's room where just men could go in and drink, and they had a ladies' room where ladies could drink alone with escorts, and then they had a regular room that anyone could come into. Uh, at lunch hour, we could turn the tap on and the beer just kept flowing right through. You could just keep filling glasses and moving them along, and the, the beer flowed and they drank. Today, the Palace Arms no longer operates as a tavern, but residents of the surrounding neighborhoods often wonder what it was in its earlier days. By the mid-1800s, there were taverns in all communities of Toronto, from the Winchester Hotel in Cabbage Town to the Brunswick Hotel, now the Brunswick House, in the Annex. A rather unique-looking tavern at Bloran Avenue Road was the Tecumseh Wigwam, this oddly shaped one-story log cabin built in the 1820s was a well-known drinking spot, especially on Sundays. Today, a more opulent structure, the Park Hyatt Hotel, stands in its spot. The Halfway House once dominated the corner of Midland and Kingston Roads in Scarborough Junction. Halfway House was built between 1848 and 1849 by Alexander Thompson. Originally it was located in Scarborough at the intersection of what is now Kingston Road and Midland. Um, people who were coming to the Halfway House would have probably started in Dunbarton in Pickering, made their way to Halfway House, stopped and had a meal at noon, and then continued on their way to the St. Lawrence Market, hence the name Halfway House, halfway between Dunbarton and halfway between the St. Lawrence Market. Well, our halfway house was more than a tavern, it was an inn as well. So inside, it's not devoted exclusively to a tavern area. You enter the front door, on one side is a parlor and a formal dining room, and on your left-hand side would be the entrance to the tavern. It also has an exterior door to enter the tavern so that men who are coming to drink there wouldn't have to enter into the main inn where people might have been staying or otherwise eating. It also meant that after they'd been drinking, they could leave inconspicuously out the side door rather than having to come where everybody's watching them. Over the years, the condition of the halfway house declined, and in the 1960s, it was saved by being relocated to Black Creek Pioneer Village. It now stands there within the village as one of 40 historic structures. Now we're in the tap room or tavern area of Halfway House. Now finding me in here in the 1860s would have been very rare, as this is distinctly a men's area. Men would have come in here to drink, to play games, to play cards, and even to hold certain social functions. For example, we know in our Halfway House, for the first seven years of its existence, the elections for the ward councillors were held in this very room. We've ventured across Toronto and we're back at the Black Bull, a tavern that was here when Toronto was just a small town. So here's a toast to some of the great old taverns that helped to shape the Toronto we see today. I'm Heather Seaman. I'll see you next time on Structures.